I'm a connector of people. And the reason you can video call your loved ones. Let friends know you got home safe. Work from home or jump on the latest social media trend. Whether I'm climbing in a city or somewhere remote. Jumping in the van early in the morning to repair storm damaged cables. Fixing a fault at a roadside box. Are learning about new technologies. I'm proud of what I do because what I do impacts millions of people every day. I'm literally connecting people. If you told me last year that I'd be working as an engineer, keeping the country connected... I'd have said, no way, that's not me. I'm not even technical. But here I am. I guess we're in the business of changing people's minds as well as careers. I work for a company that values me. BT encourages me to learn and progress my career. One day, I could become a specialist, a trainer or even a leader. I'm proud of what I do. I'm powered by me. And empowered by BT. Matt Derry House. From Liverpool John Moores, Dan Cook, Liverpool University. Good morning and welcome to the Chelmsford Sports and Athletics Centre for the 2022 Bucks and BT Outdoor Athletics Championships. Yes, a new venue. We're often in Bedford for these outdoors, but it's pastures new. It's a bright sunny day with the sun beaming down onto the track in Essex. And this was also the home of Chelmsford City F F FC. Or football club and that means there's a lovely stand nice purpose-built facility and today it's going to be used for athletics and cannot wait to get this event going of course those with world olympic european commonwealth prowess at this tournament both the present past and future as well let's hope so very close, as you can see, to the start of the 1500 metre heats, of which we expect there'll be five. So here is our lineup, as you can see. So, as I say, five heats of the men's 1500, and then four heats of the women's will follow. They'll get underway around 11 o'clock, and then 100. 
sprints, lots of heats, of course, as always, and uh, 400 hurdles, lots to uh, get underway today. And of course, three days of action, you can keep up to date with the event information and the timetable on the Bucks website. If you do a Google search for Bucks Outdoors 2022, should find all of that information, the live stream here on YouTube, and of course there is action at the regatta as well this weekend as there always is now if you're here it probably means that athletics is your first choice but i'm just uh, floating that about pun unintended so looking at that lineup as we get underway with this first heat of the men's 1500. So it's the top four going through automatically to the semi-finals and then four time qualifiers across all of the five heats. So Kieran Can, Sam Charig, Matthew Stonia, he's certainly one to watch out for in this. Fast lifetime best of 3.39.17. That was to win the Watford British Milers Club Grand Prix last year. British Milers Club, a specialist series for middle distance athletes. See lots and lots of PBs time and time again. They really pride themselves on the ratio of it and actually saying that last year was their best year ever. With the pacemakers, it's usually around 40% um, of athletes to finishers who get lifetime bests which is quite strong so he's certainly one to watch was uh, part of the great britain cross country team at the euro cross country championships at the end of last year they're usually in december freddie richardson of st mary's luke burgess leo cossum matt dwerryhouse daniel cook leon wheeler daniel brookling nikki faulkner ethan kendall and joe Gebby. So as I say, a reminder that it's the uh, top four going through automatically and then four across all of the uh, five heats. So this is the opening action of the day. We'll have a look at, as they come through. You can see Daniel Brookling in the white and green of Swansea. By the end of the weekend, you'll have revised and rehearsed all of your colours if you don't know them already. So three days of uh, live action here from uh, Chelmsford. Of course, Monday, Bank Holiday Monday, then becomes finals day. Medals decided minutes after one another. And no doubt it will be pretty thrilling stuff. Two minutes, 11.6 at the 800 metre mark. So we've got a, a leading group of what, eight athletes out there. So they'll try and uh, divide into four. How are we going to separate this uh, leading group at the moment? Brooklyn is going to come through with one lap to go now. So they hit the bell with uh, Brooklyn up front. Stonia is uh, also up there, 976. So looks like the uh, Imperial man, Nicky Faulkner, in this group. Along with the St Mary's athlete Freddie Richardson, who is just on the shoulder there, moving up into third place now is Richardson. So Brooklyn, Stonia, and uh, Richardson fighting at the sharp end here. Nick, Nicky Faulkner, I think, in fourth place. Could be a battle on for that spot. Freddie Richardson now slowing down along with Estonia and Brooklyn, it looks like. So they're all coming home and qualifying with the Imperial man, Faulkner. So the clock didn't stop as they came through the line, but it was around four minutes and two. 
The uh, clock's still running there, so a couple of teething issues with that, but uh, first race of the day. So first heat concluded. So athlete 895 just coming across. That's Matt Dwerry House of Liverpool, John Moores. Well, really is uh, glistening in the sunshine is uh, Chelmsford. I'm having to squint my eyes to see anything. And you can see that by uh, the light in the uh, camera shot that's seen on your screen. Four more heats to go of the Benz 1500. Let's take a look at the lineup for heat number two. So we've got Christoph Hornick of St Andrews, Harry Wood of Southampton, Sheffield Hallam's Alex Wilson, Leeds Beckett's Charlie Roberts, James Rashbrook of Durham, John Howarth. Showing us uh, that's BIR, that's Birmingham. Had to check there a minute. Will Sim, Sheffield, Harley Norman of Exeter, Ethan Riley of Nottingham, Matthew Snowden of St Mary's, hoping to follow his teammate Freddie Richardson through, Leeds Ewan Bate, Max Hayden of Loughborough, and Bristol's Stephen Denby. So John Howarth after seeing Matthew Stonia go through. Now, Stonia first ranked on paper of all the athletes here, and Howarth second. He has a lifetime best of 3.39.85 and was at fifth at the Bucks indoors a couple of years ago. So the officials there by the start line having a good position to see the athletes come past as we take a look at that lineup that I've just mentioned. And the officials in athletics returning post COVID has been a, a key part of keeping the sport going and helping it come back stronger. And there's always a campaign, there's always a thought towards if you're not strong enough to compete as an athlete, well, why not take up officiating and be the one that times the stars as they come through, be the one that leads them through the call room and such. I was talking to an official who, who is regularly here and she said, yeah, I led Usain Bolt out the call, call room. I wasn't really thinking about that at the time because I'm just focusing on, on seeing who comes in first, who comes in second and making sure everything's on time. But afterwards, someone says, well, did you realise that was Mo Farah? So heat number two of the men's 1500 metres. Underway now. morning stroll for these athletes getting through their paces quite bunched together in these uh, opening stages here in Chelmsford got people viewing pretty much all around the track that's one of the benefits of this stadium there's some space all around the track and then one large stand and one smaller one The home of Chelmsford City Athletics Club. So, a terrific season for John Howard, the Birmingham University student. So, straight away, it's the Loughborough man at the front. And that's Max Hayden. And then it's the St Mary's athlete in second place, Matthew Snowden. Looks as though Howarth is just about slotting into third at this point. 67.6 for the opening 400 metres. 
So 67.6 for the opening 400 metres. Yes, we must enjoy the sunshine today. Forecast for Sunday, Monday, not as good. And I can tell you... So Max Hayden, we saw his teammate Matthew Stonia qualify previously. Loughborough's been have been well represented at middle distance, well, pretty much in every event, of course, but they appear to put out an incredibly strong team this year. Stunning, really. Certainly, Jess Judd is here, someone who competed 10 years ago at Bucks when it was a London 2012 Olympic test event in that Olympic stadium. And Jamie Webb also down. We'll wait and see if he does turn out for the 800 metres. Also someone who's won multiple Bucks titles and indeed for multiple universities previously of Manchester Met. Two fourteen two at the eight hundred meter mark. So that is a two point four slower than at the opening heat, just to bear in mind, and you can sort of sense that. So coming to this top end, Hayden still leading. First team very much sorted itself out over the closing 400. It's a similar sort of group, perhaps slightly larger than we had. In fact, from the previous heat with one lap to go. Howarth briefly disappears from view and comes back again. So he's in the red. Athlete just coming round on the outside. one three forty. That's uh, Christoph Hornick of St Andrews. So top four going through, now beginning to spread out and step on the gas. So eight athletes were in this uh, leading group, in fact nine a lap ago. And now really you've got six in contention, I'd say for four spots and we know this has been slower than the opening heat and we've still got three more to come. So Hornick in the blue, Howarth in the red and Snowden in the blue and white stripes. Hornick looks like he just has enough, so does Howarth and Snowden. And the Lufferman Hayden is run out of it around 3.59 on that clock. So it was a faster finish in the end. We'll wait for the uh, clock to uh, have its breakfast and sort itself out. Charlie Roberts of Leeds Beckett then was man number four who came through. So the trackside well, clock, two, as they know. one or two gremlins, we will sort that out. You're watching live coverage then from Chelmsford of uh, the Bucks and BT Outdoor Athletics Championships. We were in uh, Sheffield indoors, seems just five minutes ago, but since then some athletes have uh, gone on and set uh, a few PBs, many using this as their outdoor season opener, athletes. and some haven't done uh, any Six track competitions this year. So this is the lineup we're looking at here of uh, heat number three. So to more pleasant things, heat three of five, men's 1500, uh, lining up on the inside, Zach Cohen, Plymouth. So we're waiting for results times to come through from the first couple of heats as well. I'll give you this lineup in the meantime, Zacharia Cohen of uh, Plymouth. I should really pronounce that name better because I've got a, a brother-in-law by that name. Harry Dial of Cardiff Met, St Mary's of Alex Edeker, Leeds Beckett's Ethan Hussey, certainly one to watch out for, really talented uh, junior, representing Leeds Beckett, he was uh, third at the England Under-20 Championships over 1500 last year, Keelan Hopewell of Liverpool, John Moores, Josh Mulley 
of Oxford Brooks, Aaron Enster of Cardiff, Will Barnicott of uh, Birmingham. He had a really good year last year. Matthew Hoochel of Swansea, Hugo Hewitt of Exeter, Jack Wright of York, Jack Patton of Strathclyde and Jamie Cooper of Uwe, University of the West of England. We're over in the east of England today in uh, Chelmsford. Let's see how this next heat goes. Once again, we've got one athlete from St. Mary's and they've already got a duo through. Richardson and Snowden. Snowden made it through quite comfortably. Didn't have a mountain to climb. That pun was intended. Given we have a reasonable spread of British universities, other mountains are available. They're actually the house system at my school, the top mounds in each country. Snowden, Scarfell, Pike. You probably know Ben Nevis in Scotland. Donard in Ireland is the uh, pointless answer. So Ethan Hussey then on the shoulder there. They come up to completing one lap of this third heat of the men's 1500 metres. 70.8 at the 400. 70.8 after 400. So this may well be the slowest pace that we've had so far. It was 2.11.6 was the fastest after two laps. Again, strong St. Mary's representation at the front, as you'd expect. Alex Edeker. I don't think they had the best indoor championships in Sheffield, so they'll hope to kind of bounce back from that. Again, another university with uh, middle distance specialism. Likes of uh, Emil Keres and Ellis Cross and Lily Coward. Emily Moyes representing them in recent years. The Surafell brothers, Rowan Axe. To name Alex just Edica a few. So Alex Edeker, Ethan Hussey, the top two, and then Matthew Hochul in the top three. Two sixteen point six. So five seconds slower than the opening heat so far. It's the top four that go through automatically. We do have a, a maybe a bit of a more splintered front group, maybe just upping the pace now. Perhaps they've heard that announcement, although. I tend to get the sense that athletes don't hear the stadium announcer when they're focusing on their race. So coming down the home straight here, you get the feeling that uh, the St. Mary's man, Edeka, would like someone else to take this on. Ethan Hussey will duly oblige. One lap to go, three or four showing trackside, and the Cardiff Met athlete Harry Dial joining in. Ethan Hussey was up there as they went through, Matt Hoochall was up there, Alex Edeka still. So Hussey, Dial, Hoochall, and Edeka. Now Hussey and Hoochall. Hoochel taken over, so they're now in alphabetical order, the two H's. Dial has dropped back the Cardiff Met man. Edeka still fighting there in third place. I think that's Will Barnicott then in fourth. Haven't really mentioned him much. It looks like he is at fighting for that fourth place. Brilliant battle though, right to the line. Here comes Hussey. Edeka, Hoochel and Barnicott just run out of it was, uh, looks like it could be uh, a Cardiff vest there. Athlete 5-2-2. So yes, that's Aaron Enser, or Aaron Enser. 4-0-4-18 showing track side. So, we think that's the slowest heat 
of those we've seen so far. Well, thank you for joining this morning's first session. Maybe you're going out and about later today and you can join us later or you're able to stay throughout. Of course, finals day coming up on Monday. Do join us for as much of these championships as you can. Or maybe you're just getting out of bed and brushing your teeth. Okay, we'll go through the lineup for this once they are We are about to head on to heat number four. Ben Parker of Glasgow, Joshua Poncia, Joe Blacknell, Marcus Chantry, Killian Doherty of Cambridge, Adam Ede of Cardiff Met, Luke Van Oldshorn of Loughborough, Surrey's Will Harding, Cameron Allen of St Mary's. So we've seen three St Mary's go through already, haven't they? So they have a fourth entrant in this. Richardson, Snowden and Edeka have all gone through so far. Timothy Hartley of Manchester Met. Ben McMillan of Stirling. Brodie Denham of UCL. It's University College London, of course. Oxford's Matthew Fuller and Northumbria's Jack Wadsworth. So now we get underway. And uh, well, we just saw Ethan Hussey, of course, in the last heat. He was third ranked overall. John Howarth was second and went in the second heat. Matthew Stonia was first ranked and went in the first heat. So I can see a pattern here. Ben McMillan is among the top six on paper. He's the Scottish students' 800 metre champion. And that was last weekend, that competition. So Cameron Allen, the St. Mary's students, the first GP athlete home at the World Uni Plus Country Championships. So just having a look at the uh, chat on the uh, stream so far, lots of comments saying let's go Buak, which is Birmingham University Athletic Club. Up the Luff as well for Loughborough from Sam Flaherty. 66.2 for the opening 400. So a few of you supporting Will Barnicott as well. So let's see who is uh, near the front. We've got Joe uh, Blacknell of Birmingham. Marcus Chantry is there of Durham. So let's have a look at uh, the uh, split two laps in. 214.1. So that compares well compared to the previous heat but isn't the fastest overall four non-automatic qualifying spots available so blacknell and uh, chantry near the front Cameron Allen of St Mary's then in second place behind 980, the Loughborough man, Luke Van Oldshorn. So a bit of change at the front. Blacknell now in third. Looks to me like it's Macmillan then in fourth in the green of Sterling. So 
Bannell Chun Lapra, Alan St Mary's, Blacknell Birmingham, McMillan of Sterling. So this one, it's clearer for the top four, but don't give up just yet. The athletes in fifth and sixth could change down this home straight. Will it be timed right? So here we go, towards the line for one final time in this 1500 meter heat. Looking left and right is Van Oldshorn. He's going to come home first. Macmillan second. And then Allen and Blacknell qualify. And in the end, a fast finish. Four minutes. 0 0.07. So also happening this morning is uh, qualification for the women's triple jump. So we had a really exciting competition indoors, which uh, Lily Holland, the GB Junior International, won right at the end of the competition. So Lily Holland involved again, the Loughborough athletes. Capable of uh, over 13 metres. Jazz Sears, someone else who's really excited over the last few years. She represents BCU. Emily Gargan of Liverpool. She put in a strong showing indoors. A really good battle. Jasmine Holland, the sister of Lily, representing Sheffield. So more on the triple jump in a moment. Let's take a look at this uh, lineup for the next heat. So this, of course, is uh, the final heat of five. Oliver Lock of Imperial is in it, as is Warwick's Tom Jones. Not that one. Benjamin Ringrose Vose of Sussex. Bristol's David Corky, Ben Sanderlands, Kian Evans Cowie, Ethan O'Shea of Birmingham, Neil Ibarta of Cambridge, Matthew Everett of Hallam, Adam Plows of Hull, Coventry's Jamie Harper, UCL's Harry Allen, Ben Patterson of Loughborough, and Kieran Raleigh of Stirling. So first time Bucks here in Chelmsford and it's a, a track with a, a nice big warm up area which is really helpful for the athletes preparing. Nice large stand on the far side as we look through the cage at the athletes on that fast ride waiting for heat number five of the men's 1500 metres. The women's 1500 will follow in a few minutes time of course. And you can have a look at the Bucks website, have a Google search for Bucks Outdoors 2022. And uh, you should see all the event information, including the entries and the timetable for today and indeed all three days. So more triple jump in a moment. This is the final heat. So... All qualification will be settled for the semi-finals of the 1500 metres. So Sterling's Kieran Riley one to watch out for. Former silver medalist. Ben Sanderlands, the uh, Scottish champion. So coming through now with three laps to go. 54 seconds on the clock. So Riley, Locke and Allen at the front. So 
72.1 for the opening 400. So that is uh, quite comfortably the slowest. It was 70.4 before as we get up the split screen of the uh, triple jump so we can bring you some of that simultaneously. So let's have a look out for Ben Patterson as well. He wears 966 for Loughborough. Sandilands still near the front. Kieran Riley of Sterling wears 1389 in the green of Sterling then. So how have they managed to improve their speed in this uh, next lap? 221.7. So that's uh, five seconds slower than any of the other heats. So time to get a move on now. Triple jumper goes flying past them on their outside. So still Kieran Riley there, just on the shoulder. Ethan O'Shea on his inside. So just the top four going through automatically. Four starting to separate themselves away. O'Shea is in there. Riley is in there. So this looks to be decided now. I think the athletes are recognizing that as well Ben Patterson just gets on the afterburners to escape away from the fast finisher there so Sanderlands was the fourth over the line Jamie Harper of Coventry was just behind I don't think that'll be enough to qualify because that was the slowest heat but certainly O'Shea Riley Sanderlands and Patterson do make it through So women's triple jump, as I mentioned, uh, Lily Holland is in this, Emily Gargan, let's it have a look. So you're watching live coverage of the first day of action. Here in Chelmsford. That was uh, Adidoy and Adiyanju of Warwick jumping there in the triple jump. We now have the heats of the women's 1500 metres. As you can see, Jess Jard lining up here and, and fantastic that she is here. Obviously, someone that first competed at Bucks in 2012. Not to make her feel old at all winning bucks that year in the olympic stadium most prominently i remember she has won two bucks titles on occasion in the same same weekend not many athletes have managed to do that
She's won 800 all the way up to 5,000 metres as well. Of course, she's made a name as well on the World and Olympic stage. World semi-finalist in the 1,500 metres in 2017. Putting her front-running style to good use. So the field, Jess Jack lining up on the inside. Bromwins, Tratton Thomas, Exeter. Uh, St Mary's, Juliet Hodder, Manny Johnson leads. Nottingham's third kicker. Uh, Hannah Raiden, Durham. And then we have Emma Clark, Emma Hall, Lewis Pettit, Lexford, uh, Marissa Mystery, Birmingham, Freya Bennett. So Jess Judd on the inside. Juliet Hodder of St Mary's then on her inside. Natalie Bretherton of Bristol, also among the lead few. And Maddie Johnson is the Leeds athlete near the front. But as you can see, all breaking up here, led by Jess Judd's pace in the first heat of the women's 1500 metres. So Judd coming through with uh, two laps to go. And then Hodder behind her. In uh, second place, Juliet Hodder. And it's Jodie McMail. In this sort, there are two athletes with 392. That's interesting. So it's actually Freya Bennett of Birmingham. That would make more sense. So looked around 225 when they came through 800 metres. Battle on there for second qualifying spot. Really spread out now. It's uh, Hodder and Bennett that are together. So Jess Judd has also won at Bucks Cross Country in the past, six times Bucks champion overall. She's won indoor titles, outdoor titles. Really interesting what she would consider to be her best distance. A really emotional moment when she qualified for the 10,000 metres at the trials which were held in Birmingham, coming through across the line. With uh, Eilish McColgan right in front of her. They both overtook the long-time leader in that race to come through. And then, of course, she'd also set a fantastic 5,000-metre time in May last year, which uh, helped her get the uh, 5,000 time. So in the end, she complete, completed in both. And it would be interesting to see her view on, on what she might focus on this year. Obviously a, a talented 1500 metre runner. It can be so tricky in the 1500 at the major championships to just try and squeeze through. And yeah, you don't want to end up just being caught out and run out of things in the, uh, the heat. It can be hardest event to make it through to the, the final. She was so, close to doing that. Eight. London 2017. So Jess Judd is going to come through then and 434.94 showing on the clock. 
Hodder and Bennett, St. Mary's and Birmingham following. Natalie Bretherton of Bristol in fourth. Fern Kimber of Nottingham comes home in fifth. So they are all through. So just having a look here at the lineup for heat number two. Ty Brockley Langford among those to watch out for, the Manchester athletes. As is a Louise Shanahan, Emily Thompson, Alex Shipley all in the same heat. So Louise Shanahan, she defended her Bucks indoor title in Sheffield indoors in February having also won it in 2020 of course no championships in 2021 she was at the Olympic Games for Ireland of course such a competitive middle distance team for the Irish with the likes of uh, Shifa Cleary Butner and Nadia Power and Georgie Hartigan and Katie Kirk Kieran McGeehan try and make it through to that Irish team I'm sure I've missed someone out as well so Shanahan is here the Irish 800 champion she's doing the long distance so she'll get a race against Jess Judd if they both make it through which you'd expect them to which will be really interesting to see Emily Thompson someone who won this title indoors in 2019 fifth at the British uh, Indoor Championships this year. Alex Shipley of Oxford, the reigning England under 23 bronze medalist. And Ty Brockley Langford, the English school's 800 metre champion with a best of four, 23.89. So I think this is a really stacked uh, heat. Keep an eye on. So Brockley Langford just having a look for her near the front there. Emily Thompson a little further back in the red vest of Birmingham. Visibility is something that uh, is a challenge with the sunlight beaming down, I have to say. So Emily Thompson near the back of this pack. We've got Louise Shanahan in the pale Cambridge vest just in the centre in third place. So let's have a look at who else is near the front in this one. Molly Butterworth of Leeds in the dark green vest, just leading this one at the moment. She was someone who had an excellent Bucks uh, indoors. Jess Spilsbury of Loughborough also in this large leading group.
So still Molly Butterworth leading. India Pentland of Leeds Beckett in second place. So you're watching the first day of action then, the Bucks and BT Outdoor Athletics Championships here from Chelmsford, the home of uh, Chelmsford City Athletics Club. See a, a flash of the triple jump there in qualification. This morning it's the first field event to start at these championships and the first track event was the men's 1500 metres and we've moved on to the women's now. So it was the top four men to go through in each of their heats. It's the top five women to go through in theirs. With uh, four heats. Uh, after this, at uh, 25 past 11, we've got the 100 metres starting off with the men's. And then, because there are 14 heats scheduled, it's the women's 100 metre heats at 12.35. Before half past one, we kick off with the 400 metre hurdles. So still Butterworth and Pentland at the front. Shanahan still remains in third place. Looks like Spilsbury of Loughborough in fourth then. So Shipley of Oxford is also in this lead bunch. And then I think that looks like Thompson of Birmingham. So Butterworth, Pentland, Spilsbury, Shanahan, Shipley and so Thompson. Four, five, six athletes broke away down that so straight. six athletes looking for five places. So Shipley on England under 23 bronze medalist. Thompson, former Bucks indoor champion over this distance. Shanahan, someone who's competed at the Olympic Games for Ireland and twice Bucks champion indoors. They're all among this leading group. So Shanahan leads them home from Thompson and then Shipley Spilsbury. 48.24. Yeah, Molly Butterworth impressed indoors. It was actually her first track race of the year when she came to Bucks indoors. So over we head towards the triple jump. The sun blasting towards the sandpit. So live action here with the women's triple jump on the far side of the stadium. So Amelia Daly of Birmingham jumping here. So those uh, field results being uh, noted down by the field officials and then they hand them in at the end of the session and then they get uh, posted up on the Roster Athletics app. So they're all being uh, noted down by those officials now, the field judge. Meanwhile, we're having a look at uh, heat number two. We'll try and bring you a bit more of the triple jump through this uh, session while the 1500 metre heats are ongoing. So 
OK, so this is the third heat, then out of four of the women's 1500 metre. Nadia Kalantes of Bath, Joyce Zoe Banks of Sussex, Emily Hughes of Sheffield, East Anglia's Isabel Morris, Sabrina Cena of Birmingham, Manchester Mets' Amy Jackson, Pippa Bailey of Loughborough, Emily Lowry of Cardiff, Emily Field of Bristol, Almi Nuruka of Leeds, Meg Gadsby of St Mary's and Esme Hollick of King's College London. So Sabrina Cena, another for Birmingham who impressed indoors. And then she went on to be part of the Relay at the World University's Cross Countries Championships in Portugal. And that'll be the case for a few that we'll see later on. But of course, Sabrina, who now is in second place, won the Bucks indoor title over this distance and someone who had a, a, an outstanding youth career and is getting back to her best. That improved on her fifth place from 2020 at the Bucks indoors. She was also second outdoors in 2019. So around 120 through 400. So we've got a lead group of three, which uh, Sabrina Cena has slotted herself in the middle of. And then Amy Jackson is our leader at the front. So Jackson with a lifetime best of 4.43.89. She competed indoors in the 800 and 1500, not progressing through the heats though. So that will be her key target and maybe one of the reasons why she's taken this one on from the start here. So Emily Lowry of Cardiff then is behind them in third place. So we'll have a look and see what they go through 800 metres in. Emily Lowry, a former Northern under 20 silver medalist. So around 2.41 there. So still Jackson, Sinner and Lowry, that top three. There were three other athletes with them though. Looks like that's the blue and white stripes of St Mary's, which is Meg Gadsby. So Cena from Lowry Jackson has dropped back to third. Gadsby is in fourth place. Around 3.35 when they came through that time with one lap to go now. Five athletes going through automatically from this heat. It's Pippa Bailey of Loughborough then who's in fourth place wearing 9.88. So all in one line, spread out, gaps between them. So Cena now beginning to pull away. Coming down the home straight for the final time. She's going to make it through to these semi-finals. So watch out for the battle between Lowry. Shouts of, come on, Emily. Gadsby is battling. To be honest, they are all through. There is a big gap. Bailey. Gadsby. Jackson and Lowry join Sinner through 4.45.50, showing on the clock.
So triple jump qualification. And we've also got the uh, javelin getting underway. So again, a qualifying event. The hammer taking place in the throws area outside the stadium, I believe. And men's shot put qualification getting we'll underway get also. So first look then of the uh, women's javelin qualification as we go in then to this final heat of the women's 1500 meters. So heat number four again top five athletes going through and then four time qualifiers across all of these heats. You can follow start lists on the roster athletics app and the Bucks website for the timetable and entries. So Sabrina Sinner going through quite comfortably previously. We've seen Jess Judd go through, Louise Shanahan, all of these that we expect to be medal contenders come the final if they make it. And so we have a javelin bottom left picture and picture there. So Julia Lace of King's College, York Zoe Tompkins, Elsa Palmer of Birmingham, Katie Balm of Exeter, Nottingham's Ellen Newton, Emily Sidaway of Leicester, Samantha Mason of Leeds, Neve Carr of Edinburgh, Cambridge's Neve Bridson Hubbard, Alex Millard of Loughborough, Holly Newman of Oxford Brooks, and Kelsey Cornish of University College London. So Neve Bridson Hubbard certainly one to watch in this as they come through 481.3. And at Bridson Hubbard, so lifetime best of 415.41. She actually lowered her lifetime best from 423 to that last season with the fastest time that I mentioned at Watford. So Alex Millard won the strong Loughborough contingent and she joins Sabrina Sinner in the World University Cross Country Championships in Portugal in March. She's also the English National Cross Country Champion and was fourth last year at the England Under-23 Championships, which are in Bedford. And this event moving from Bedford to a new venue here in Chelmsford. So let's have a look as they come through. Alex Millard, as I mentioned, 1031 of Lapra at the front. Palmer of Birmingham wearing 418 in the red is there. So these athletes all together. So certainly a, a smaller field. We must have had some DNSs. 239.4 at the 800 meter mark. Neve Carr of Edinburgh, lifetime best of 426.39. So that's uh, kind of the outer reach of the top 10 overall on rankings coming in. So five automatic qualifiers and then four time spots available beyond that. We do actually have some athletes a little further back, but it was 
quite a bunch together. They're now out on their own. Looks like maybe these five. So Palmer of Birmingham. We've got Carr of Edinburgh, Mason of Leeds and Millard of Loughborough. So those are the leading four. And that may not change. And, and that quartet has now broken up. So these women pretty much uh, assured a place in the semi-finals that you can see on your screen. Palmer there in fourth place, just trying to close in. Oh, bunching together a little. Just managing that gap. They may not be aware of how big is the distance behind. So here we go. Samantha Mason on the inside. Alex Millard of Loughborough on the outside. Looks like she's going to come through and win this heat. So here comes Millard from Mason, Carr and Palmer. And then in fifth place is the Nottingham athlete, which is Ella Newton. So we're next moving on to the men's 100 metres. So you can follow the start list on the Roster Athletics app. So looking at the lineup for this uh, first heat of the men's 100. So, so it is seven athletes who will contest this first heat of 13 men's 100. So David Naylor of Edge Hill. Aston's David Boaki, Sam Brudney of University of the West of England, Alex Parkinson, Manchester Met, Murray Fothering of Strathclyde, Leeds Beckett's Jordan Yates and Loughborough's Michael Olsen. So Michael Olsen, he's made GB uh, junior teams. 
over the last couple of years. Won Scottish titles as well. Indoors and out in 2019. This is his outdoor season open. Lifetime best of 10.35. So here we go. Fotheringham in lane six, the Strathclyde athlete. Here they come. Fothering comes through 10.92 from David Biaki of Aston University. 10.92 showing trackside clock. So those are the two, two that uh, go through automatically the semi-finals. So that was uh, heat number one. David Boaki and Murray Fotheringham making it through. As always, lots of heats, lots of people signing up for the 100 metres. It is actually 13 rather than the 14 initially build. So the lineup for heat two. Here we go, Karede Awe of East London, Manchester Mets, Abraham Oreken, Gareth Hopkins, USW, Patrick Pardio of Leeds, Kaya Kearney of Bath, Ethan Potty of Glasgow, and Liverpool's George Mitchell. On the east side in lane two, the about 60 meter bronze medals back in February at the EIS. Lifetime best of 10.42 set last year. So Awe, Oraken, Hopkins, Pardio, Kearney, Potty, and Mitchell. So there they are lining up. So Awe of University East London, lifetime best of 10.42, the Bucks indoor bronze medalist, lifetime best set in Dagenham last year. So field action also ongoing. You can see the uh, throw there of uh, 35 metres for athlete 498. You can have a look at all the entries and follow the event through the uh, Bucks website and have a look at all their numbers. We're just going to look at this uh, next heat. So green card shown by the officials. So athletes call to their marks. Awe, Oregon, Hopkins, Pardio, Kearney, Potty and Mitchell. So similar to what we saw in the 1500 metres, the fastest ranked on paper goes in heat number one. Previously, of course, it was uh, Jess Judd. And Matthew Stoney, in this case, it was Michael Olsen. And then second ranked overall... Goes in, heat number two is seated, that's Karadio Awi of East London. So let's see how he goes here, right on the inside then. Karadio Awi with Potty actually is going to beat him. So Potty of Glasgow, 10.73 on the clock, the fastest out of the two heats that we've seen so far.
So over to the third heat we will go in a moment. And that will feature Richard Akinyebo of Nottingham Trent. There he is just lining up in the uh, pink and navy. So over we go to Javelin qualification. That looks like a Nottingham vest. So two Nottingham athletes down in the javelin, Nicola Bell and Jesse Brown. So, heat number three of the men's 100, Akim Loibel, Conlon McDonald, Richard Akinyebo, Harry Williams, Jaden Moon, Sammy and Daniel Lamb. So, watch out for Akinyebo from lane four. So, Akinyebo coming through the centre here quickly. Harry Williams chasing his down and... Birmingham's Daniel Lamb, big battle between those two for the second automatic spot. But once again, it's two tenths faster than the heat that preceded it after seeing Ethan Potty go out to 10.73. Uh, Akin Yebo, 10.50, of course, showing track side. So that's close to the lifetime best, within a tenth of it for Akin Yebo. Okay, so heat number four, Marius Ball of Southampton, David Morgan Harrison of Hull, Carm Lungpitter of Northumbria, Jacob Norcliffe of Chichester, 
Akinalulwa Akinbo of Loughborough, Anthony Obadote of University of Central Lancashire, Ber Bristol's Jan Bauer also in this one. So David Morgan Harrison, we were really excited about him indoors because he came here after winning the Northern title in a new lifetime best of 667, taking a massive chunk off it. Obviously his uh, brother, Andy Morgan Harrison winning the Bucks indoor title previously a couple of years ago breaking the championship record over 200 as well and then went on to become the British champion as well so Ball Morgan Harrison Peter Norcliffe Akinbo Abudote and Bauer this is heat number four of the men's 100 meters and we have at the top two qualifying automatically and then six time qualifiers across all of these heats, all 13 heats. And the women's 100 metre heats will follow these. So we get underway now. Watch out for Morgan Harrison from lane three here. Far and away with Akinbo of Loughborough battling there with, I believe that was uh, Peter of Northumbria 10.46 so these heats are getting faster and faster all the time don't know what the uh, wind speed is so just a rundown of this heat so far the first heat was won in 10.92 by Murray Fotheringham and David Boaki joined him in qualifying for the semi-finals. The second heat, Ethan Potty, 10.72. Karedi Awi joined him in qualifying in 10.91. So these results all coming through on the Rostra Athletics app. Akin Yeba won the third heat, 10.50. And then Daniel Lamb was second for Birmingham in 10.89. And uh, obviously the fourth heat is the last that we've... Uh, had David Morgan Harrison won that, we're just waiting for those times to come through. So you're watching live coverage then of the first day of action here in Chelmsford of the Bucks and BT Outdoor Athletics Championships. People watching all the way round the stadium. Up here on the balcony is our commentary position. We've also got the javelin qualification for the women going on. So let's take a, a snapshot at that. So just looking indeed across the javelin field and all of the entries, I can see that uh, Becca Walton is in this. So someone who had a really good championships in uh, Tallinn last year as part of the GB Junior team there. Lifetime best of 55-68. Bethany Moole also won the top javelin throws in the country. Joanna Malley. There are actually four Loughborough athletes ranked among the top five. Leah Hillman of Loughborough and Emily Dibble as well. Hannah Johnson of Coventry. Jesse Brown of Nottingham and Nicola Bell. Hannah Barnden of Birmingham. Emma Howe of Leeds Beckett. So at the moment, they're just trying to get through the qualification and those distances being written down by those field judges and then they'll be handed in at the end of the session and they'll make their way onto the roster athletics app so we should know them by the end of the day so i can now bring you the result morgan harrison 1046 and akinbo 1077 from that last heat here is heat number five and it features william wilshire toby Ogun Kanmi, Michael Demoa, Chizute Ogbede, Ken Ma, Oliver Miller and Andrew Baird. So that uh, will come up in a few moments time. Here we go. So the athletes settled in their blocks. Watch out for Ogun Kanmi, 10.54, his lifetime best. So uh, Ogun Kanmi, the Southern Under-20, 100 champion three years ago. Coming rapidly through, a really good battle this one between the Brunel man and Michael Demoa was uh, with him. I think Demoa just came through there, 10.72. 
So that is just faster than Ethan Potty was. Of course, these times are what the clock shows track side. They're unofficial and the results should all come through in the roster athletics app, as I say. So great to be back at a Bucks championship again. It feels like Sheffield was uh, so recent, of course, but you can see the same familiar faces and the colours, the African violet of Loughborough, the red of Birmingham, the green of Stirling. The same uh, announcer as well, Adrian Christmas. I think he's been doing this since uh, around 2005, so 17 years that he's been part of the Bucks Championship. I think even before it was called Bucks. Used to be called a Booser, if I'm not mistaken, the British University's uh, Student well, Association. Three DNS in this, um, that was uh, somewhat before my time. Queen Mary Brunel Kingston. So in lane one, you need a uh, Essex. So the lineup for heat then, number six two, next. So it'd be Ayamide Lemache of Essex, Queen Mary's Louis Menzies Walker, Jacob Campbell of Brunel, Fawaz Mustafa of Kingston, Alex Haydock Wilson of Loughborough. So someone who is a GB international over 400 metres won the 200 meter indoor title and is here going over 100 meters so trying to do what Jess Judd and others have done and, and win across more than two distances across their Bucks career which would be something really special of course have to fight for it over 100 meters his uh, lifetime best is actually 10.57 but he did recently do a windy 10.40 in Clermont we kind of expect that 10 30 is the usual source of winning time. 10.20 would be very special. Uh, also in this, Oluwole Orimaloye of Birmingham, Kai Jones of Banger and Kelvin and T. Tanner of Swansea. So Haydock Wilson goes from lane five. Expect him to feature prominently here. It's heat number six of the men's 100 metres and it's the top two automatic qualifiers and then six timed spots across all of the 13 heats. Here we go. Oh, that's quite an exciting uh, recall gun there. Here in Chelsea, that's the first one that we've had of these championships. So Lemache, Walker, Campbell, Mustafa, Haydock Wilson, Orimaloye and Jones and Ntitana. So watch out for Haydock Wilson then. Goes in lane five. Here he comes through the centre. Orimaloye with him. And also in T Tanner, very close for that second spot. 10.85 for Haydock Wilson, though.
So heat seven coming up next. Let's have a look if we can bring you some times. Yes, Toby Ogden can meet. Beat Michael Demoa actually in heat number five. So Ogden can meet 1071 and Michael Demoa 1074. Some PBs that we're seeing lower down as well. Which is often the case. Athletes for whom this is quite a strong competition around third, fourth, fifth do tend to set PBs. Some of those at the forefront have kind of uh, world championship aspirations. They might find themselves in uh, international races where they set their, their lifetime bests often. So Virgil Doe of Surrey, Harry Hansaker of Hallam, Durham's Matthew Harris, Cameron Bailey of Birmingham, Cameron Bailey, by the way, has a fantastically up-to-date Power of 10 Athletics database profile. Everything is linked. He's got a contact email address if you wish to get in touch with him. And I did. I got in touch with him, sent him emails to say how brilliant and up-to-date his Power of 10 was. David Corsi Dewu. Jaskaran Singh Karai of Warwick. King's College's Pierre Walker and Rio Booth of Liverpool, John Moores. So David Corsi Dewu is of Buckinghamshire New University, by the way. Just to add that in, some of the abbreviations leave me guessing a little. So Joe Ferguson, <laughs> lifetime best of 10.57. He was the Bucks silver medalist indoors and is also the Northern Indoor champion over 200 metres. So let's see how they get on here. Joe Ferguson, <laughs> Harris Bailey, Corsi Day with Karai Walker and Booth. Harris is going to come through here from Bailey of Birmingham, 10.75 on the clock this time. So Harris from Bailey. Should we have a look at heat number eight then? Darian that probably Moore. is a good idea. Darian Moore Birmingham. of Birmingham, Oxford Brooks, Nanshuan Kutu, Josh Shagagi of Exeter, Manraj Singh of Cardiff. Rob Warman of Sheffield, Louis Hinchcliffe of Lancaster. Now he's probably going to be the one to keep an eye out for here. Lifetime best of 10.60. So if he equaled that, that would be kind of middling in terms of the heats that we have seen so far with the fastest at this point being uh, David Morgan Harrison. Had to be careful, I didn't say his brother Andy there. 10.46 he ran. Hinchcliffe, also the Northern bronze medalist already this year. That's indoors over 60 and 200 metres. We're just getting to the point where we're seeing more outdoor championships, of course. So most achievements this year will be indoors, with the exception of the Scottish student 
Championships with which are taking place. And Orlando Bell of Oxford and Denis Insezu of Exeter. I'm hearing the ladies and that's athlete in lane two. And Shuan uh, Kutu of Oxford Brooks. So athletes called to their marks. Moore, Kutu, Shagagi, Singh, Warman, Hinchcliffe, Bell and Insezu. Again, the recall gun sounds. So we are 90 minutes in then to the first day here in Chelmsford after a relocation for uh, being at Bedford since uh, certainly since I've been coming to these championships around seven or eight years. I think the last one not to be in Bedford might well have been the uh, London 2012 which was inside the Olympic Stadium. So really exciting for those athletes to be some of the first competing inside that stadium before it took on the global stage. So quite a pause before getting this heat underway. So the officials just asking the athletes to remain still and focused and steady, keen to get underway. It's absolutely boiling here and the sun is coming towards that direction of the 100 metre start. So the athletes are being baked in it. Better than rain, of course, but let's wait and see. I wish those the sprinters do like warmer conditions. Helps them get warm and loosen up those muscles a little. So here we go. Watch out for Hinchcliffe from lane six. More going well in lane one. Hinchcliffe very strongly. With Shagagi coming through perhaps for second was his dip time right. 10.72 shown on that clock. So... I think we'll probably only get the first two through from that one, the first two automatic spots. We have seen heats that have been up to two and a half to three tenths faster so far. And of course, next one will be heat number nine of 13.
So we also have the men's shot put qualifying and then the women's uh, hammer qualifying. So that's happening in uh, another facility just outside of this main stadium. As we've seen, the women's uh, javelin is well underway. So those are the main field events for the moment. So this coming up is heat number nine as promised. Jack Mensah of Loughborough, Plymouth's Victor Zhang, Brooke Lee of UCL, Nick Price of Staffordshire. Often uh, 200 metres tend to be his strongest event. So it'll be interesting to see if he doubles up, often does. Tom Cooney of East Anglia, Alexander Gerrard of Sussex. Well, we know Gerrard is a, a specialist in hitting it from 40 yards. It's a little longer, 100 metres here to go for Alexander. Clinton Obidjiaku of Kent and Timmy Rotimi Tavio of AECC. So that's our lineup for heat number nine out of 13 coming up. Results of the uh, triple jump have started to come through, by the way. I can bring you those in just a second. They're on the roster athletics app. As we take a look then at the uh, shot put. Happening on the far side, adjacent to where the javelin has been. And there you can see stepping into the circle. So as we head then back to the race, Nick Price of Staffordshire wins 11.03. Jack Mensa of Loughborough, very close to him. Okay, back to the shop at one, four, three, five. That's Kieran Valley of Swansea throwing here. So this is the home of Chelmsford City Athletic Club. And it's just in the corner of the pitch where the goal would normally be. And you've got the, the fence that would be just behind the goal effectively when football is played here. And that's stopping fans from spilling out onto the pitch. And that is next to where they are throwing. This is the lineup then for the next heat coming up. It's heat number 10 of 13. Lemuel Crancel, Oxford. Leicester's Nathan Cuthbert. Bryn Smith of Brighton. Lorraine George, Nottingham Trent. Tyler Panton of Brunel. Kanish Kumar, University of the West of England. And uh, Nikita Martin of, of Leicester. Frankie Arkwright of Edge Hill.
So having a look then at the uh, javelin. So Krenzel, Cuthbert, Smith, George, Panton, Kumar, Martinov and Arkwright. A line up for this next heat number 10. So Krenzel, Cuthbert, Smith, this is the recall then. Well, I was going to say that Bryn Smith is probably the one to watch here. 10.79, no season's best for him this year as he opens up his uh, 100 season. Southern senior indoor bronze medalist and Bucks indoor fifth in Sheffield over 200 metres. So we can now bring you as promised the women's triple jump results so this is results from qualifying so i can tell you that lily holland jumped out to 1279 wind legal other notable results 1227 for georgina ford wells of loughborough so that was from qualification group a and then just looking now at Group B on the roster athletics app. Emily Gargan of Liverpool, 11.89. Janet Brown of Warwick, 11.66. Jazz Sears of Birmingham just ahead of that on uh, 11.74. So the start are saying there's a lot of movement in the set position couple of mentions of that that we've heard so far so all of those triple jump results on the roster athletics app you can download that from the app store depending on which device you are using great to see those triple jump results coming through a few dns's in that including uh, kushbin waric who was in the final indoors and abby mills the sister of holly mills who represents exeter Holly Aitchison, 1134, another decent result. Emma Bakary of Birmingham, 1146. So here we go now over to this next heat of the 100 metres. Coming through nicely is Tyler Panton of Brunel in 10.56. Bryn Smith following him, it looked like, wearing number 10. So another decent heat time then. And I make that equal third fastest from the 10 heats that we've seen so far there's still three more to come so uh, we'll shortly see reality osuoha is to come stuart greenhall the scottish student champion and joshua hawkins of chichester watch out for him he goes in the last heat you can keep up to date with the timetable of course with the women's 100 meter heats they kick off 10 of those expected in 20 minutes time then the 400 meter hurdles we've got the javelin going on as well as uh, the shot put so once again two qualification groups the automatic qualification distance is 45 meters and if they don't make that then it will be the top 12 going through automatically as so we take a look at the lineup for heat 11 of 13 of the men's 100 with a dane russell of newcastle cardiff mets elion yewu alex field of imperial daniel afolabi of birmingham william baziki of warwick reality osuaha of hallam aaron Travers of nottingham and ching hao chen of sheffield so the action coming at you thick and fast now here. 
the first couple of hours of the first morning session here in Chelmsford. So heat 11 of 13. Elion Yewu in this, a 10.7 his lifetime best. The England under 23 finalist and Bucks indoor 60 meter semi finalist. So this one actually could be quite hard to call. You've also got Daniel Afalabi, who I mentioned at BCU, 10.63. And he was fourth at the English Schools Championships in 2019. And, well, some athletes haven't had a full season really since 2019. COVID has very much got in the way for more people than others. It has mean that some championships haven't been held, whereas some open events have. And that's led to personal bests in lieu of medals. Only in some cases, though. So Javelin. We can see athlete 1370 of St. Mary's. That's Natasha Heyman who is waiting there. So sunglasses out. Heat 11 of 13. Men's 100 metres. Russell Onyewu Field. Afolabi, Biziki, Osuaha, Travers, and Chen. So Chen in the black and yellow of Sheffield, furthest from the camera in lane eight. So a couple of mentions of movement in the blocks. Athletes now looking to be steady and away. So Afolabi and uh, on Yewu looking strong in this one. It's going to be Afolabi of BCU in 1093. Onyewu also finishing strongly for Cardiff Met from lane two. 10.93. So no disrespect to the athletes, but uh, that is the slowest time that we've seen so far, just as a reference point. So means we'll probably get just the two athletes going through. So we go back to women's javelin qualification. Once again, 45 metres, the automatic uh, distance. So we're just looking out as well to see if there is a scoreboard there. There is a scoreboard. Hopefully uh, it can be turned in our direction when appropriate. So heats number 12 and 13 coming up. First of all, we have Benjamin Tu of University of Central Lancashire, Stirling's Stuart Greenhall. So he's a lifetime best of 10.78, the Scottish indoor 200 meter silver medalist, but also Scottish University's 200 meter champion and 60 meter silver medalist. Outdoors last year, he got silvers in both the 100 and 200 in uh, Grangemouth. Will Brown of Surrey, Alex Ayo of a Bristol continues the lineup from lane four. James Bowen of Sussex, Sahib Singh of Westminster, Cardiff's Thomas White, and Frederick Nilsson of Leeds. So Nilsson with a lifetime best of 10.71. The Danish athlete, he was a semi finalist indoors over 200 meters. So hands on hips, ready to get this heat underway here in the sun in Chelmsford. To Greenhow, Brown, Ayo, Bowen, Singh, White and Nielsen. University Central Lancashire, Sterling, Surrey, Bristol, Sussex, Westminster, Cardiff and Leeds. So it looks like a a couple of DNS is in the centre here. Let's see who 
powers down, coming towards the line. It's Stuart Greenhow, as expected, in 10.81. So that's the unofficial time. It leaves us with just the one heat remaining now. Okay, so let's see if we can bring you up to date with uh, some javelin, which is uh, on going here in the background opposite the 100 meter star here we go so we're just looking out for a number for that athlete in the black vest didn't actually see a bib number there so bring you back to the javelin in a moment you can uh, have a look at the javelin entries on the roster athletics app results are coming through at the end of the competition once again 45 meters is what they are aiming for so far as automatic qualification for that final is concerned So Chris Osse, East Anglia, Southampton's Harry Osborne, Zaid Jaria of Northumbria, Joshua Hawkins of Chichester. One I mentioned before to look out for. So lifetime best of 1076, the Sussex County champion. Kaito Kawakami of King's College. John Jesse of Middlesex, 1074 at best. He was seventh in the final of the 60 metres indoors. Toby Fatona of Edinburgh and Jacob Mines leads Beckett. So John Jesse, 10.74 as mentioned, and Joshua Hawkins, 10.76, remarkably close. Will they be the top two athletes in this, or will someone else take a bite at this cherry with dangling in front of them, qualification for the semi-finals, top two athletes, and then that six non-automatic spots. So it's a green card. There was some noise in the field, we're told. That's why the start has been delayed. So this will be the last heat and then we will bring you some field action afterwards. Hopefully we can get as much in as we can. So Osse, Osborne, Jaria, Hawkins, Kawakami, Jesse, Fatona and Myers, Hawkins from four, Jesse from six. Well, just as you thought they were at last going to get underway, they don't, so we'll let them reset.
So John Jesse has been disqualified. One of the fastest athletes in the competition and well, one of the best in this field. So he'll be really disappointed. Someone who was a finalist and not too far away from the medal indoors. The Middlesex man is out. That was the order I heard over the uh, Tannoy from the starter. So Osse, Osborne, Jarrier, Hawkins, Fatona and Myers we should have. So Hawkins from lane four, the one to watch here. As they come hurtling down this home straight. Hawkins coming through. Kawakami also going well, the Japanese athlete. 10.90 on the clock. So we actually, I was mistaken earlier, the women are still warming up in the javelin. So we'll keep an eye out for when they get going. As you can see, they're nearly ready before the scheduled start time of 12.40. So just over 10 minutes time. So those warm-ups taking place. We've got Ellie McArdle, Hannah Johnson, Elise Lambert, Lana Wilson, Alicia Levy, Martha Bevan, Lauren Davy, the Welsh heptathlete representing Swansea, and Becca Walton, perhaps the gold medal favourite here for Loughborough, but her teammates will have something to say about that. Attila Knight of St Mary's, Jesse Brown, Emily Lutus, Beth Mool, another big medal contender of Cardiff. Rebecca Owsby of Northumbria, Zoe Kidney of Leeds Beckett, Peanut Meekings of Brunel, Nicola Bell of Nottingham, Leah Hillman of Loughborough, Lowena Riley and Shannon McGarry and Victoria Yahankova. So later this afternoon we'll also have the women's long jump getting underway the hammer taking place in and outside of the stadium field area Digital is pervasive across everything that we do as a business, whether that's selling to our customers through digital channels, servicing them, or creating fantastic new experiences for them in voice or artificial intelligence. There's a huge opportunity there that's really exciting. I work in a BT sales alliance that covers broadband, mobile, TV and sport. Our agile approach allows us to bring together lots of different people focusing on a common goal and allows us to release little and often to our customers. BT is a great place to work. One thing I love about it in particular is the flexible working. It's really focused on the output, not working the nine to five. We have flexible working, working from home, different hours and compressed weeks. It's really what works best for a person. The traditional telco as we know it is no longer relevant in the modern world. So that means that we need to reinvent ourselves as a new technology organisation. I'm really excited because I'm going to be part of that journey. What do I love about working at BT? There's loads of things, I can't pick three. People think finance is less exciting than it is because they think it's all about the numbers, but actually finance is about partnering and understanding your business and using the numbers to drive value and insight. You could be in an audit type function, you could be in management accounting, you could be in bid work. There's a load of different things that you could do as part of finance within BT. It is a great measure of the business, it never lies. 
BT actually sponsored me to do my exams and um, to become a chartered management accountant. Qualification I can take anywhere, um, but I love the fact that BT have allowed me to do that here and I can work all the time when I'm doing it. It can be quite cyclical in terms of when workload comes, so there's a real drive around month end, around quarter and year end. Those can be busy times, that's true, but it means that outside of those times, sometimes we take opportunities to just step back and relax a little bit, and BT is really flexible around that. I really like maths, and I really like spreadsheets, which sounds really nerdy, but I just love it. We're currently rolling out 5G across the UK. We're also building the emergency services network. So that really helps people from a connectivity perspective. And they're really designing the ways of working for the future and working with the company to change mindsets and create a place that we all want to work for. The technology that we create in BT technology is TV broadband mobile, Wi-Fi and voice. I work in media and broadcast. If you watch TV, Freeview, BBC, this is what we do. Well, BT creates an environment where it encourages you to be bold, be brave and bring your best self to work. And by doing that, we're enabling us to get the best out of everybody within our company. As a woman in leadership, I feel very supported. I feel like my opinions are listened to and I feel like I've got the opportunity to really contribute to the future of BT. Thank you, BT. So coming up in a moment, the first heat of the women's 100 metres. And there is your lineup. Here it is once again. Loughborough's Jess Lister, Beth Lecky of Northumbria, Birmingham's Hannah Jones, Hannah Childs of Chester, Jagoda Trella represents Newcastle, Staffordshire Sydney Davis and Aaliyah Sibbons of Bath. So Sibbons. The one to look out for, she goes off well there. Nearest the camera. And comes through in So just like the men's, it'll be the top two going through automatically. 
and then six timed spots. So the sun beaming right down on us. Here is heat number two. Maria Grunach of Liverpool, John Moores, King's College's Nadja Schmidbauer, Anna Cameron of Strathclyde, Alison Bell represents Edinburgh, someone who has uh, really done well through the Scottish junior ranks. Won the uh, under 20, 100 and 200 double last summer and won the Scottish students title last weekend. As I've been saying, she represents Edinburgh. She's a Givnet North club athlete. Charlotte Longden of Leeds, Abby Smith of Glasgow and Sara Bartolo of Cardiff. Sarah Bartolo, a Maltese international. Alison Bell has also represented the GB junior team. So heat number two of nine. So again, we've been shortened by one heat compared to what we were expecting based on uh, the entries, which does uh, sometimes happen. Generally, we have seen eight athletes in each heat, making it full across the track. So in between these heats, we'll take a look at women's javelin qualification. As the whistle blows, we're ready with Grunak of Liverpool, John Moores, Schmidbauer King's College, Cameron Strathclyde, Bell of Edinburgh, Longden of Leeds, Smith of Glasgow and Bartolo of Cardiff in lane seven this time. So I tell a lie, not eight athletes in each. So Sibbons, our first and only heat winner so far. So second heat now underway. Alison Bell from lane four, extremely comfortable from Anna Cameron making a Scottish one, two through in 11.93. So nice to see lots of Scottish representation and of course they've come all the way down here to Chelmsford in Essex. I wonder if that's any further, probably roughly similar to Bedford, just a bit further east, maybe a bit further. Bedford off the uh, M1. When you sign up to hear about their graduate opportunities, and you can find the information about that on the Bucks Twitter and Instagram feed, or you can go to the online. Uh, so heading over to see what's happening in the javelin. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a nice zoomed-in angle, helping us to see more clearly that it's 670 Holly Benson of Edge Hill who will be next to throw. So Javelin comes down you can see there that's the 30 meter mark and then you've got 45 in between them you've got that white marker and that is the automatic qualification distance for the final if 12 athletes don't get it then we'll take the 12 top competitors through qualification. Uh, 
So Rebecca Chibbers of Warwick next. So that is the heat that we've just seen, which was won by Alison Bell. We're now going to move on to the next heat, which is heat number three. So this is third heat lineup. Zoe Dake, Leone Ashmead of Nottingham and Sheffield Hallam respectively. Then Canterbury Christchurch are represented by Abigail Walters. Annabelle Stewart of Salford, Stephanie Robertson of Birmingham, Kudzi Garikai of East Anglia, and Chrissy Murray of St Mary's in lane seven. So that's your lineup. So we are still in the first round of throws in the javelin. That's Grace Morgan, the Welsh heptathlete going there. Just got a, a sighting in the distance of that scoreboard as they are about to put a measurement up for Grace Morgan fingers crossed so 30 meters and 14 there so we'll try and bring you what we can of those uh, measurements have been Holly Benson of Edge Hill who we'd uh, seen a moment before previously she wears 6.70 so more on that in a moment so we've got Dake, Ashmead, Walters, Stuart Robertson, Gary Kai and Murray in this so Leone Ashmead the top athlete here 11.73 at best the northern indoor 60 meter champion also the reigning England senior silver medalist is Leone Ashmead from lane two here so she's absolutely dominating from Zoe Dake Stephanie Robertson behind 11.85 is the fastest heat so far So top two going through automatically, just to remind you. So you might notice in the javelin that all of the athletes thrown at the moment are in qualification group B. So once again, 45, the automatic distance. 12 spots available in that final. Alice Gregory of Cardiff here. It's like a Cardiff Met vest, so she's throwing here. I'll have a look once again at that scoreboard. So they're about to put that measurement up. So Alice Gregory. Numbers coming up now. Mexico. 
in five, Katie Harris, Leicester. There we go. Looks like uh, 20 metres and two. So we'll need better than that to qualify. So just looking in the distance there, I think that might have been Jade O'Dowda throwing the Sheffield Hallam best, more than that in a second. Let's bring you the lineup for this next heat. Acacia Ellis would probably be the one to watch here, University of East London. Two Bucks semi-finals never made the final, personal best of 11.79. Meanwhile, Jade O'Dowda's throw comes up as uh, 41 metres and around 40. Just uh, looking in the far side there. And also in this heat, then, as we continue with the lineup, Cardiff, Megan Webber, Tina Lewis of Middlesex, Chianti Saboa of Exeter, Katie Harris of Leicester, Chelsea Penny of Durham, and Ashley Bevan of Brunel. So that's this next heat number four. Top two going through automatically in six time qualifiers across all nine heats. So these athletes are about to be called to their marks. So all of a sudden, for a brief moment, the sun has just uh, dropped. It's gone behind the main uh, stand. And uh, that is a thankful relief from the uh, beaming sunlight that's made uh, visibility a real challenge. So Ellis, Weber, Lewis, Saboo, Harris, Penny and Bevan. Keisha Ellis would love to make the final for the first time on the inside. Weber going really well though, so Weber from Ellis. Also finishing fast was Tina Lewis of Middlesex in the third, 12.04. Generally these heats have been sub 12 seconds. So very likely that we'll just see the top two automatic spots qualifying from this heat. The latest throw there, 29.43. You can see we're still in the first round of the javelin. Fortunately, there was no athlete number on the scoreboard. So next heat is heat number five of the women's 100 metres. And here is who it will feature. We've got Rebecca Roots of Cardiff. Rachel Lorimer of Stirling. 
Rebecca Fisher Bernard of Cambridge, Stella Perrett of Leeds, Lucy Drover of East Anglia, Emily Harris of Edgehill, and then possibly the fastest will be Nicola Cagill of Northumbria. So she is the Northern silver medalist. There we go, with a lifetime best of 11.82. She has this year run 11.97 windy. So back to 1475. That's Rebecca Chivers of Warwick. We're now in the second round of women's javelin qualification here in Chelmsford. Meanwhile, the women's 100 meter heats are also going on simultaneously. So heat number five of nine, top two going through automatically. And six time qualifiers across all of the heats. Rebecca Roots, Rachel Lorimer. Kafesha Bernard, Stella Perrett, Lucy Drover, Emily Harris, and Nicola Cagill. So watch out for Cagill on the outside of Northumbria going well, as is Emily Harris also, and Rachel Lorimer of Sterling. 11.96 showing on that clock track side. So 11.96 the unofficial time. You can see results coming through on the Rost Athletics app. They are starting to come through for field events that have concluded as well. So handshakes all round. with still four heats left to come. Thank 
So Sam Perkis of Exeter, Laura Volmer of Essex, Bria Bullard of Lapra, Matilda Robinson of Cardiff, Madeline Wapples of Birmingham, Jane Davidson of Aberdeen and Abby Galpin of Bath. So Galpin, one of few to have already set a new lifetime best this year outdoors over 100 metres. The Guernsey athlete improved to 11.8, just over a tenth of a second she improved by. She's the Southern Indoor Silver Medalist and was fifth at the Bucks Indoors, of course, that being over 60 metres. Perkis, Volmer, Bullard, Robinson, Wapples, Davidson and Galpin here. So Gal Galpin, in the Galpin gets out really well in lane seven. Madeline Wapples closest to her trackside clock showing 12 seconds dead. If I'm not mistaken, Leonie Ash means 11.85 remains the fastest unofficial time that we have seen so far. So you're watching the Bucks and BT Outdoor Athletics Championships here from uh, Chelmsford, the home of Chelmsford City AC, but a, a wonderful track as well. Large stand on the far side. We've got field action also ongoing and more that is soon to get underway. Of course, qualification all for the moment. 19.35 the latest distance we're hoping to add the athlete number to that you can tell that that's Jade O'Dowder though the GB Junior International heptathlete Sheffield Hallam that's her second throw she was around the 41 metre mark last time around I think it was 41.43 or 41.45 didn't quite catch the last did it on the scoreboard but anyway you get the gist so that looks like it's a little bit shorter than a first round throw Jade O'Dowder also at times is running the uh, 400 4 by 400 meter relay she did that the under 23s next will be the 70, so manchester met vexed uh, vest here now uh, i believe that's amy mctaggart in this second round 36.72 Jade O'Dowder so we've actually moved into the third round now Jade O'Dowder was the second athlete to throw in this third round so my apologies it's really fun when you have a field card and you are watching some uh, action on a sustained basis and you can fill all the distances in Difficult when there's a simultaneous event. 32.82 coming up now, so that must be for McTaggart. We just saw Alice Lineker throwing there. I don't believe there's any relation to Gary, and in fact, it's a different spelling. So I'm just waiting as we see the lineup for the next uh, 100 heat for that. Uh, measurement for Alice Lineker which hasn't come up on the scoreboard just yet I think it might have been 31.81 as Phoebe Hoen of Sussex going next so in the third round and this of course is one of the two pools it's qualification group B Thirty-three, twenty-three. so glad to say we've added the athlete number to the scoreboard and can bring you that as well really really great been able to do that so Freya Cowan of Glasgow Oxford Brooks Charlotte Sidaway Paris Cowell of Manchester Met Birmingham's Diane Walker certainly the favorite from this heat Isla Golder of Sheffield Alicia McLeod of Newcastle and Jocelyn Gimaraj of Buckinghamshire New University 
So Diana Walker, four times individual Bucks medalist going here for Birmingham. She was second behind Hannah Breyer in the 60 metres indoors. So here she comes from lane four. Looks like a Gimenaish on the outside then, second place. 11.97 showing track side for Diani Walker. And that leaves us with two heats to go now. So we're still in the third round of the javelin. Let's see who is next to throw. So decent effort from Jado Dowder over 41 meters was the furthest that we've caught. This is Lynn Harvey of Glasgow. I believe that uh, the likes of Becca Walton are in the other qualification group So that's Jody Smith of Brunel. Another really good up and coming heptathlete along with uh, Jado Dowder. Ellen Barber is also here for uh, Loughborough. I think all of them actually have the Commonwealth standard for England. I seem to remember it was the uh, Outdoor Combined Events Championships got it 6,000 points obviously uh, a key mark in the heptathlon So, Rebecca Chivers of Warwick. Javelin that rises high, comes down. Between 30 and 40 metres. So Cardiff Mets Izzy Tustin, Chuck Yin Wang of King's College, Edge Hills Ella Paul, Constantina Raminu of Sterling, Brunel's Kiama Kofi, Melina Pelling of Warwick, Harriet Jones of Surrey, Bethany Shaw of Bristol. The measurement there for Chivers 34 34 third round the javelin. Natasha Heyman 
of St Mary's next to go. You just saw the measurement for Grace Morgan in the third round, 30-26. So athletes now call to their marks. Tustin, Yin Wan, Paul, Rumanu, Coffee, Palling, Jones and Shaw. Heat eight of nine. Harriet Jones of Surrey has a lifetime best of 11.97. That's uh, roughly the average t finishing time of these heats so far. Tustin, well away. Tustin going really well, right on the inside. And Harriet Jones followed her home, 12.20 that time. So near certainty we'll just see the two athletes going through there. And that leaves us with one heat remaining. Four hundred meter hurdles coming up in uh, twenty-four minutes' time, as we uh, cross back to the javelin. Then, so this is qualification. We remain in the third round. Final couple of throws we should be having off this third round before we move into the fourth. Might be Alice Gregory of Cardiff Met who is throwing there. So, if so, that would be the last throw of the third round. Certainly the best mark that we've caught is uh, Jado Dowd as 41 metres and 40. So they'll just reset before the start of that fourth round. So the lineup is on your screen for heat nine of nine for the women's 100 meters. So let's take a look at it. Amaka Okonkwo, Surrey, a little Surrey athlete hoping to make it through. Lara Bardelli of Glasgow. Becca Matheson of Robert Gordon, so someone who's uh, really impressed at uh, Scottish Championships. One of their best sprinters, St Mary's Eloise Lewis, Sarah Malone, Liverpool, John Moores, Emily Dickerson of Leicester, Emily Reid of Sheffield, and Jessica Poon of Cambridge. So we'll keep an eye out for when the javelin resumes, of course, and then just looking our way down that timetable, it's coming up to 10 minutes past one, so we're not too far away from the women's long jump beginning and the men's discus before two o'clock should also get underway. Men's high jump then afterwards, and then the second pool of the men's discus. I believe we actually have three pools of the women's long jump. And then finals of the men's shot and women's javelin. They are to come. So men's shot final, 10 to 5. And 5 to 5 for women's javelin, both in the far corner adjacent to the 100 meter start line where the athletes are ready for heat 9 and 9. Oconquo, Bardelli, Matheson, Lewis, Malone, Dickerson, Reed, and Poon. Top two going through to those semi finals automatically. So watch out for Matheson. 
Scottish indoor bronze medalist over 60 and 200 metres and then also outdoors last weekend Scottish student silver medalist and she was also the Bucks indoor bronze medalist over the 200 distance so Matheson in three, Malone in five. They're the ones to watch out for here. Matheson chasing down Malone. Malone takes it in 11.92. So Rebecca Matheson actually has a never broken 12 seconds. So she's going to be very close to it. 11.92 showing on that track side clock. So Sarah Malona, another Scottish athlete as well, Edinburgh Club. Whereas Rebecca Matheson was uh, third at the British Universities. Uh, Malone just missed out on a place in that final. To both the 60 and the 200 meters, she was a semi finalist. She hasn't broken uh, 12 seconds before either, so you could be looking at two new landmark lifetime bests. And I think you got a sense that there was a quite a bit of delight when uh, they crossed the line, and it's only a heat as well, so that is really good to see. So that bodes really well for their continuation in the competition. I remember that uh, Darcy uh, Kuypers set lifetime best after lifetime best across 100 and 200 metres and went sub-12 for the first time a, a couple of years ago. And so, yes, this competition early on in the year as well. We're still in April, so now's a good time to start the outdoor year off well if you can. So we'll take a, a short break while there's no action happening and we'll be back in a moment's time. Digital is pervasive across everything that we do as a business, whether that's selling to our customers through digital channels, servicing them, or creating fantastic new experiences for them in voice or artificial intelligence. There's a huge opportunity there that's really exciting. I work in a BT sales alliance that covers broadband, mobile, TV and sport. Our agile approach allows us to bring together lots of different people focusing on a common goal and allows us to release little and often to our customers. BT is a great place to work. One thing I love about it in particular is the flexible working. It's really focused on the output, not working the nine to five. We have flexible working, working from home, different hours and compressed weeks. It's really what works best for a person. The traditional telco as we know it is no longer relevant in the modern world. So that means that we need to reinvent ourselves as a new technology organisation. I'm really excited because I'm going to be part of that journey. What do I love about working at BT? There's loads of things, I can't pick three. People think finance is less exciting than it is because they think it's all about the numbers, but actually finance is about partnering and understanding your business and using the numbers to drive value and insight. You could be in an audit type function, you could be in management accounting, you could be in bid work. There's a load of different things that you could do as part of finance within BT. It is a great measure of the business, it never lies. BT actually sponsored me to do my exams um, to become a Chartered Management Accountant. Qualification I can take anywhere, um, but I love the fact that BT have allowed me to do that here and I can work all the time when I'm doing it. It can be quite cyclical in terms of when workload comes, so there's a real drive around month end, around quarter and year end. Those can be busy times, that's true, but it means that outside of those times, sometimes we take opportunities to just step back and relax a little bit, and BT is really flexible around that. I really like maths. 
and I really like spreadsheets, which sounds really nerdy, but I just love it. currently rolling out 5G across the UK. We're also building the emergency services network. So that really helps people from a connectivity perspective. And they're really designing the ways of working for the future and working with the company to change mindsets and create a place that we all want to work for. The technology that we create in BT technology is TV broadband, mobile, Wi-Fi and voice. I work in media and broadcast. If you watch TV, Freeview, BBC, this is what we do. Well, BT creates an environment where it encourages you to be bold, be brave and bring your best self to work. And by doing that, we're enabling us to get the best out of everybody within our company. As a woman in leadership, I feel very supported. I feel like my opinions are listened to and I feel like I've got the opportunity to really contribute to the future of BT. Thank you, BT. So welcome back to uh, the opening session then of the Bucks and BT Outdoor Athletics Championships 2022 and there's just a few minutes break until we get underway with the men's 400 metre hurdles and uh, so that is coming up at half past the women's 400 hurdles at two o'clock in the field the next action is 20 to 2 that's the women's long jump qualification so whilst there's a break in action an important announcement that we'll be moving over to session 2 which is a different YouTube video it's in the same playlist on YouTube so you've got session 1 session 2 all the way up to session 6 so we'll be moving over to session 2 and that will start when the next action begins at half past one. So thank you for joining us for this morning and into this afternoon, and we'll see you shortly. I'm a connector of people. And the reason you can video call your loved ones. Let friends know you got home safe work from home or jump on the latest social media trend. Whether I'm climbing in a city or somewhere remote. Jumping in the van early in the morning to repair storm damaged cables. Fixing a fault at a roadside box. Are learning about new technologies. I'm proud of what I do. Because what I do impacts millions of people every day. I'm literally connecting people. If you told me last year that I'd be working as an engineer, keeping the country connected... I'd have said, no way, that's not me. I'm not even technical. But here I am. I guess we're in the business of changing people's minds as well as careers. I work for a company that values me. BT encourages me to learn and progress my career. One day, I could become a specialist, a trainer or even a leader. I'm proud of what I do. I'm powered by me and empowered by BT.